got a team. You got a team that won the league last year, and uh, but they went. They they had a lot of seniors, and obviously you know there's a gap. You know these are the guys who filled our gap because we had three seniors in the offensive line last year. These are the three guys who replaced those three seniors, and they were all three all conference first or second team. Uh, I see that they've gone into a process of rebuilding back, but they they know who they are. They they are no less. Uh, of a team of direction, but they have, you know, they've had, they where those seniors were, they don't have the same thing in their place. Uh, the, the key to the whole thing is a magnificent player at quarterback named Matt Scheibel. Uh He is the heart and soul, you know, the program. Now, he's a senior, and he's, uh, I was talking to Mike earlier today, they, they, of course, Tony's from Nebraska, and they have well, everything they do looks a little bit like Nebraska, and this guy looks like oh, what was his name, Mike? Gary hey, Crouch. I mean, who won the Heisman? I mean, he'll he'll beat you running, he'll beat you throwing, uh, he'll run over you, he'll run around you. He's 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 that kind of player, and he, and they all feed off of him, offensively, defensively, and the whole thing. He wasn't MVP in the league, I don't guess, last year, but he was an All Conference. Quarterback, wasn't he? Or I can't remember exactly. I don't remember all that. But he's he's you know he's very definable to us. Is he running more than he's throwing this year? I, there is more of a running uh, approach, a little bit more of a running approach, and a little bit different style to their running. I mean, it is. In fact, I've, I've watched just enough college football to. But as I saw, saw a Nebraska player earlier, Nebraska sort of gone back to old Nebraska style. And these guys have likewise got a little bit of, away from the spread and gone to more of, of what Nebraska did with their couch. Uh, uh, you know, it's a little, little more two-back affirmation, downhill, really trying to... You see a pattern here. I mean, you see, I saw EKU become more of a two-back. I mean, football runs in cycles. And, uh, you know, there's this sort of fits what you're seeing to some degree. Of course, I'm speaking like I'm just having a social conversation, but it's exactly what you saw when Alabama ran against LSU. Dunk, dunk. <laughs> Downhill eye formation football. People say, how dumb can they be? There's a reason all these people are doing this now. They're not dummies. <laughs> Tarek, right? Tark. Tark on the end? T uh, no, it was Blake. Blake. Oh. Tark, when you hit Tark, got it, was it? You threw a ton of guys on the line. Right. He got thrown in when Odie. Odie got broke his right foot, in. yeah. How's that? How's that? How's that transition been? Oh, well, yeah, at first it was, it was, I was nervous when they coming into the first game, the UT Martin game, you know. I was just, I was nervous, just normal, you know, game game nerves, but as the season progressed and I, I became more comfortable with the game, the speed of the game and my teammates around me, I feel I feel as if I play with these guys, you know, all my life. I heard a singer tell Odie when he comes back he's in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> we'll when, work when it that, out. When, when <laughs> that transition started, I mean, did you need to fight for that spot or were, did you just get elevated to it and say, all right, it's mine now, and I've got to play through whatever circumstances come my way. Yeah, when the when the injury first happened, I was. It was more. It was more like, okay, you know, I have this. I have this. I have this responsibility. I have to to help my team. To help my team. I know they lost a, a great a great player. We lost a great player over the all conference line, but I have to fill these shoes. It's my it's my responsibility. And I just took it. I just took it that uh, I'm gonna go 110 percent every single play. Make sure I don't let the let my teammates down. He's had his moments. I'm. I'm a, I think he he knows I'm very comfortable with him. I hope he does. But here's here's what you get. You talk about a perfect storm. Okay, we made reference to. It. I do remember a play where we run downhill straight at him, at behind him, and it's with Sean. 
and he's got one guy right in front of him, and he turns and blocks the other way. And when Sean gets hit square between the eyes and the backfield about four yards deep, you got to go through some stuff, guys. Now, did we, what did we say when next time he got, we got our, our next play, let's go. And I told Washington, you shut your goddamn mouth and you tell him you believe in him. Because Washington will he'll, he'll run that mouth sometimes. I love him for that. He runs it all through practice, but well, when things ain't going good, he's sure he's quick to say it too. And then, well, but that happens. Right. And then that on happens. The he's had a couple of practice snaps that made me think, we can't get in a shotgun. He's going to snap it over his head. <laughs> Right? Yes, sir. And then what if you where, give me a play just the opposite of that where now that maturity's been there and he's played it and he made that play like a senior would have made. You know, when they do it exactly right, I just act like it's that's the way it's supposed to be. So uh, I think the only way you show up for the head coach is to screw it up. The rest of the time, they got to believe they don't see me as good stuff. <laughs> well, Blake, has Matt helped you? There's I learned the plays first year being there, trying to learn the system. Matt seems like an extra coach, knows the system so well in the games, and come to the sideline, show me how to step to a certain guy, and he'll like when I'm in and he's on silent watching the player. He knows how he's playing, and it's very helpful. Defense. He's got like 120 tackles already in like nine. I mean, is, it, is he just that active or is he? Or? Uh, you look, I mean, the one that I haven't looked at numbers and I look at cutouts. Is it number nine? I mean, is it the guy that sticks out to me is Brian Blanford. He is yeah, this is active. A this kid. The middle linebacker. Well, he, that's who, that's who, uh, that's who you get to play against. <laughs> but a middle linebacker in a 4-3 has a lot of freedom to get around the ball both ways. I mean, it, it sort of goes along with the position. Uh, what have you seen from their defense? Talk about that. Who well, they, they've changed defensively. They were an eight-man front. They've gone to a 4-3, and, and um, um, they are really committed to stopping the run. I mean, they are uh, a little bit unpredictable on the edges. I mean. Sometimes they're they're get up the field and some. I mean they play they play running pass tendencies. That's what I. And when they when they play the run they play it really well. And when they play the pass they play it really well. And, and and I think what you what you try to lend yourself to is having balance between the two. But um, they're a, you know they're they're a new bunch of players now defensively as junior seniors, uh, unlike. Some some offensive stuff. So they they've had they've had some some growing up on defense. They have a little more consistency on defense than they do in their offensive line. Uh, 